I'm Sierra Ty Holderman, and my issue in society that I will be presenting today is Alpecia Ariata. On your guys' right is a picture of Alpecia Ariata. It starts at the scalp and tends to like, be about dime-sized bald spots. And on, the, on your guys' left, I have a picture of me and my mother. And this started with me about five years ago. And I'm my mom's first like to ever experience this. So it was first for her. Um, alopecia areata is an autoimmune disease where the hair falls out in round patches and this disorder often results in unpredictable hair loss. When I started to lose my hair, it started just like a dime sized spot on the right side of my head. And like I said, it was five years ago and within five to six months, like the top of my head was pretty much completely bald. Just strands of hair was left. So I eventually had to shave it. And then soon after that, my eyebrows just went along with it and so did my eyelashes. I chose to talk about alopecia areata because yes, it is a big part of my life, but there are a ton of people around the world that alopecia also affects in America and other countries. <clears throat> and I would love to give more people insights on this disease and like what it is because a lot of people don't really know what alopecia is and some have never even heard of it. Like five years ago was the first time I even heard of it just because I was diagnosed with it. An inter interesting fact about alopecia is that white hair can grow in areas affected by hair loss. And now, as an example, I do have little white hairs that you can like see sometimes during the light or sun. And it's weird because my mom one day, I was just standing outside, like nothing, just standing there. And my mom was like, see, you have like white hairs on your ears and on top of your hair, like head. And I'm like, I don't know what you're seeing. And then, you know, we shine like a light and yeah, I have like little white hairs, which is really weird because I was a brunette. <laughs> so I wasn't even a blonde or anything. So it was weird. And alopecia affects an estimate of 6.8 million people in the United States of America alone. Alopecia Awareness Month is in September. And I actually posted on Facebook about this because it was my first, like, really my first time accepting that I had alopecia areata, I guess you could say. It was just this past year, I guess. And so I post on Facebook, I'm like, hey, everyone wear blue, it's like a royal, and plus my hometown Madison, our colors are royal blue, so I'm like, hey, why not? You know, just everyone has it, so why not just wear it? September. <laughs> and then also, um, yeah, like I also said, that's another fact. The color is royal blue. And also, one in five people also have a family member who is also affected by alopecia areata. In my case, I do not have a family member, so it was just a complete surprise to me, my family, and yeah, I'm just kind of the first in my family. Don't know if anyone else, because I have four nieces, one nephew. For all I know, they could develop it <laughs> sometime throughout their life, but anyone can develop it. And also, some uninteresting facts are that the autoimmune uh, system of the body attacks the hair follicles, causing them to not be able to develop anymore. A form of treatment for alopecia areata is a cream, and also in some cases steroid shots, which I actually, when I first started going bald, when I just had like a little bald spot, I actually, when I got diagnosed, I went to the dermatologist and they put, gosh, it was like, 40 steroid injection shots into this little bald spot. Like it was just crazy. Clearly nothing happened, so I just I didn't go back <laughs> to get anymore. I just kind of let it play out. And alopecia areata starts at the roots of the head, and alopecia areata can affect both genders. So males and females both get it sometime throughout their life or never. And Alpecia is often associated with other autoimmune diseases such as lupus or problems with the thyroid. And now I have hypothyroidism. It's when your thyroid 
works at a slow rate. And there's other people have hyper, which means that your thyroid like overworks itself. And you do have to be put on medicine for it. And alopecia areata is the round, bald spots on like your head. Like that's kind of where it originates. And then it can later on develop into alopecia totalis, where it's just completely, your hair is gone, your eyebrows, your eyelashes, just gone. And then in my case, what I have is alopecia universalis. It's when you're just bald from head to toe. Like you have no hair anywhere, which is nice. <laughs> <laughs> and now, women who have alopecia, alopecia are commonly asked if they have cancer. Absolutely not. Yes. Cancer and alopecia are nothing alike. They have no similarities either. And about 54% of women got more upset with their hair than their significant other, like losing their hair. And women spend an average of $50,000 just on their hair in their lifetime. That's crazy amount of money. And the women also fear rejection in their relationships due to taboos about female baldness. And as some of the graphs over here, um, some of the women stated that no treatments helped them. And in my case, I tried that one and it didn't help me. So I kind of fall into that category. And another one is like 49% of women feel like a freak. That's how I felt when I first you know, because I didn't know what's happening to myself. I just, I felt weird. Like, uh, like I wasn't in control of my body. And then eventually friends just helped me move along with it, and I just coped. And a lot of people, like, hair will fall out after regrowth. A lot of statistics that, like, the people that go through all the treatments, the creams, the shots, and everything, some of them do say that their hair comes back, but within the next two years, it can just fall out again. So they can just be bald again. It's just an up and down situation, or their hair can regrow and stay forever. Like, it's very, very weird. And right here, some of, and this graph right here, as it shows, a lot of people, sometimes it affected their personal lives as a positive, or a negative, and 42.1% of women thought that it was somewhat negative, like negative. I'm not sure which category I fall under, because I don't know, some days it's a positive, some days it's a negative, so to me I'm just kind of neutral. Alpecia areata is an issue in sociology because it can sometimes be hard to deal with mentally. And society sees everything in their own perspective of what they think is right or wrong. Not having hair in today's society is viewed as more of a bad thing than a good one because people see being bald as an unnatural thing. So now the people who mentally aren't dealing with it the right way end up going into a depressed state of mind and they take extreme actions towards themselves and possibly commit suicide. And my opinion on alopecia areata is that yes, it's scary to see clumps of hair just falling off for no reason, but there are some major perks of alopecia areata. Saving money is a huge perk because who doesn't like to save money? And then showering is 20 times faster because all we do is, you know, wash our body and then we're out. <laughs> and so having a beach areata is truly not the worst thing that could happen to you, like in your life. And these are my references. I'm gonna ask a personal question. Go ahead. Why do you not wear wigs? I actually tried. So my first year, like as soon before any of my friends knew, I always wore a hat my first year of high school when it first happened. I wore a hat. But me and my mom and my mom's friend actually drove out to Pennsylvania. We shopped for wigs. I tried some on. And then this one, it just wasn't me. At the time, I didn't have eyebrows. 
and the wig was just so goofy and I just I was like like I did get it because I I felt scared to say no <laughs> so I was like and plus my mom's insurance covered it so I'm like okay I'll just get it take it home and then after that I just put it back in the box <laughs> and never took it back out I just wore a hat my beanie so my second question is one of your slides talked about self-esteem and self-confidence you don't lack any of that. Um, you don't come across as lacking those things. Like I said, I've also had this disease for five years, but I feel like when I, like Delaney, she knew me my freshman year of high school, and I feel like just the people that surrounded me is what made me, like, help me cope throughout these five years because I haven't really had a negative like reaction from anyone towards it like people would see me and just kind of look at me weird and sometimes I get mistaken for a guy which also sucks <laughs> even when I'm wearing pink like I'll be in a pink hat pink shirt and then yeah so that's kind of a negative like I said but the positives are definitely that <clears throat> I'm surrounded by like a lot of people that love me so it's pretty awesome other than hair loss, obviously. Are there any other long-term effects? Long-term? Not that I know of. Um, when I got diagnosed with this, I, like I said, I have hypothyroidism, and I got diagnosed with that around the same time. And my vitamin D levels were also low, so I had, had to take pills for both. But I actually stopped my vitamin D about a year ago, because it came back normal, so I'm like, okay, cool. But yeah, my hypothyroidism is probably just the big one because if you don't take those pills, it can later on turn into lupus or thyroid cancer. So it's very, very, <laughs> yeah, it's very deathly, can change.